Hail to the king, baby! You like king, I like king, everybody likes king. But you want to read more than king, but you've been disappointed by other authors. They just don't seem to carry the same magic. And even though you want to expand, you've been hurt before. You've read these other people and you're like, it's just not the same. There's just some intangible quality that's lacking in what they're giving me than what I, what I get from Stephen King. So you run back to Stephen King because he's got like 80 books, puts one or two out a year, and, and you just get back into your comfort zone and you go wrap yourself in your little cocoon and you don't want to know any more about any other authors. But don't worry, Beef Daddy is here to get you out of your cocoon so you could be a reading butterfly and make your way in the world happy with, with, with an expanded library, maybe. So what I have for you today are five authors that in some way have that storytelling magic. They have some of those intangible qualities. You just can't put your finger on it, but you know when you open that book, it's going to be a winner. They're going to reward your time and effort because trust me, there's nothing worse than reading a book, investing all that time, and then getting nothing out of it. Thank you, Bentley Little. So um, I'm going to share with you these five authors. I'm going to share two books from each author that I think compare very favorably to a certain Stephen King book. So if you like this Stephen King book, you will like this book from this author. This should be a lot of fun, a nice easy way for you to expand your reading readership, your reading readership, uh, risk-free. And, and I'll give you my money back guarantee. If you don't like these authors, I will refund you all the money you spent on this tutorial. But before we get started, I'm going to check in with the Magic Duck Bucket because I think I'm going to be here a while talking about books and I need to be properly fueled. So let's see what we got. What do you have for me today, Magic Duff Bucket? You always know. You always know, Magic Duff Bucket. Rapture Brewing Sugarfoot Stout. I happen to know that Mitch over at Rapture has a new batch of this coming um, that I'm eager to sample. It's going to be even more sugarfootier. And uh, Mitch is a wizard. <laughs> I got to say... Um, he is the Stephen King of brewing. I, I previously said he's the sun top of brewing. But see, that's the thing. Stephen King really can't write a bad book. And sun top can't publish a bad book. So, and, and Rapture Brewing cannot brew a bad brew. Beer. Stout. Bam. So hopefully you'll find this as much fun as I do. And you'll walk away with other authors and if you're a collector i'm going to show you some collectible editions as well so cheers that was a pretty good pour that's right i'm grading myself live or pre-recorded as it were and it were so first up is robert mccammon and he has the same style as Stephen King. And in fact, when I first read Robert McCammon, I thought this is a pseudonym for Stephen King. There's no way there's an author who writes so so similarly to Stephen King, uh, both in, again, style, content, and, and the same chills, the same horror, horror, horrifying effect of, of the storytelling. And... Um, uh, I, I guess it is not. To date, uh, I, I believe Robert McCammon is an individual human being going about the world and eating at different restaurants and living a completely separate life uh, from Stephen King. Um, but I've never seen them both in the, in the same room together. And I, I've never been present when Robert McCammon has written a book. Um, so I cannot verify that. And if I can put a conspiracy theory out there, then I'm, I'm all for that because why not add one more to the internet? It, it ain't going to break the internet, trust me. Um, we got engineers on it. So Robert McCammon, 
If you like The Stand, you will love Swan Song. Swan Song is the first book I read from Robert McCammon when I picked up the paperback in the grocery store. And I read it because it was a post-apocalyptic nightmare. Um, and I was kind of into that. In, at the time. I think I had just read The Stand or pretty recently read The Stand and then I jumped into this and I was like, what? This this involves like a cross-country type of trek with forces of good and forces of evil but uh, the difference is instead of being wiped out by Captain's Trips, the world is wiped out by nuclear war which was really very a uh, very real threat uh, when I was a kid because I grew up uh, you know, in the 80s when the Cold War was real hot and uh, I was going to go under my desk when the nuclear bombs went off. And I was sure they were going to go off. Those were fun days. So Swan Song, this is a subpress edition. Um, you cannot buy it for cheap anyway, but um, you can get a much less luxurious copy of this book in other more uh, affordable editions. But, you know, if, if, if we're going to we're gonna show some swag we're gonna you know we're gonna we're gonna get our brag on so if you like the stand you'll love swan song if you love the shining you will love the listener this is the other another robert mccammon book where um like the shining there which features a child in danger the child has uh psychic telekinetic powers <clears throat> And an adult with those same powers is trying to save and prevent that child from falling into harm. Same thing about this story. This features a young girl who's in a plot to be kidnapped. And um, this main character, he's the only one um, who knows what's going on with her through their telekinetic link. Um, so totally different circumstances, different eras uh i think this is like 19 depression era louisiana and uh, as opposed to uh 1970s colorado but um there are very there are very strong similarities a lot of great suspense uh, this is more of a crime thriller with supernatural elements and uh the shining is more of a horror novel with supernatural elements but um I guarantee if you like The Shining, you will love The Listener. This is actually one of Robert McCammon's best books. So Swan Song and Wolf Sour. So there are a bunch of books you should get from Robert McCammon um, that do diverge from Stephen King. Robert McCammon writes more historical fiction. Um, for example, Wolf Sour takes place during World War II and it features a spy who could turn into a werewolf. That balls out crazy abstract should be enough to get you to go there but it is further afield from stephen king and i think if you stick with the listener and swan song as a starting place as a stephen king fan you should really find your way into the rest of robert mccammon's catalog up next is josh mallerman and what he shares in common with stephen king is the imagination they, they both have these incredibly large expansive fleshed out imaginations it's it's hard it's a hard thing to kind of express i've tried to express it a few times in previous takes of this video to little success because how do you explain that when you open a book and you could feel the size of the imagination just <clears throat> it's such a weird thing but it's like walking into a space and and that and getting a sense of that energy and just how expansive, detailed, terrifying it can be. And I think Josh Mallerman has that um, brilliant mind with those original ideas and you could just get lost in there. You enjoy, I enjoy the journey in a Josh Mallerman book uh, almost as much or if not more than a Stephen King book. The journey, the just being there, it feels like you're visiting another world. And um, <clears throat> I think both authors Stephen King and Josh Mallerman deliver on that in big ways and if you like Cujo you will like Pearl Pearl is a story about a homicidal pig that takes over a farm and um uh pretty holds the holds the people hostage in a way but Pearl has psychic abilities and and can force people to do his will as opposed to Cujo which is just a rabid dog that terrorizes a mother and her son in a car in a hot August weekend, I believe. 
So there are some differences, but this idea of terror inspired by an animal, flipping the script on human beings and top of the food chain business, um, <clears throat> those are both similar threads. And both of those, I think this is Josh Mellerman's scariest book, really is a bloody slasher retro type book. Um, it originally appeared as On This the Day of the Pig, and uh, this is the trade titled Pearl. I'm not sh flashing my bling bling uh, cemetery dance book only because this is the, the form. You'll probably find it in in a more accessible way. The second book, book by Josh Mallerman um, I think you will enjoy is if you liked Salem's Lot uh, uh, or Needful Things, both are Stephen King stories that center on a dysfunctional town. Jerusalem's Lot or Castle Rock, some weird happenings that go on in those towns. Well, this is Josh Mallerman's Castle Rock or Jerusalem's Lot. It's called Goblin. This is one novel and six novellas. Each novella takes place in the town of Goblin from some doomed resident there who's going through some extraordinary things, some crazy stuff. Uh, this was the first book I read by Josh Mallerman. This one made me an addict, a Mallermaniac, as it were, and it were. And um, I think you will love this if you love that idea of a dysfunctional town, a town with a history with some bad juju going on there, and it it affects the citizens in, in really crazy, bizarre ways. So you got to get the. This is the Earthling edition. I am showing you the Impossible to Find edition. Um, again, because I, I have no one else to show. Producer Joel hates it when I show her my books. But you can find this in a trade edition. I have the trade edition. It's beautiful. I love the cover art. Fun fact, this cover was done by Allison, Josh Mallerman's special lady friend. Get man, just stay away from my lady friend. So, this, this edition is probably closer to his heart than the trade but the trade edition's cool and in fact you know i just thought about it it features hedges which are prominent in the shining so there's another another fun overlap between king and mallerman so where mallerman differs from stephen king is he's very different from book to book to book he doesn't stay in one idea uh over multiple books i think he you know he did write mallory which was a sequel to bird box but um, Unburied Carol is very different than Inspection, which is different than Goblin, which is different than Pearl. Um, very, very unique ideas, and he explores them all. Ghoul in the Cape is the craziest. Stephen King's never written anything like Ghoul in the Cape. Uh, a lot, it's very experimental, philosophical, and um, expansive. Just crazy. I did a review of it if you want to check that out. Um, but if you start with Goblin and Pearl, then you can obviously work into Josh Mallerman's back catalog and um, get an understanding and an appreciation for what he'll deliver for you. These are just the, the ones that are closest to Stephen King. Josh Mallerman's a pretty new author on the scene with Bird Box in 2014, but he's got a lot of books coming out and I think a, a, a crazy wild ride future uh, from him. So that's exciting. Whereas King is maybe winding down, Josh Mallerman's just getting started. Up next is Joe Lansdale. What Joe Lansdale shares with Stephen King is the is that storyteller magic, that, that, that quality of feeling like you're around a campfire, getting a story from a master. Someone who gets you to turn those pages and hang on to what's going to happen next. You're constantly wondering what's going to happen next. In fact, I would call Joe Lansdale the Stephen King of East Texas. Um, because he brings a lot of those regional dialects and regional qualities into his writings the same way Stephen King brings in that main East Coast vibe. So um, if you like any of Stephen King's short fiction, it, like Skeleton Crew, Night Shift, Everything's Eventual, Bizarre Bad Dreams, things like that, then you will love Wet Juju. Wet Juju. I think this is the only way I can legally say that phrase without getting arrested is when I'm holding up a book and saying, I didn't make it up. It says wet juju. This is a bohemoth from SST. It's the only place 
you can go to find all these collected horror shorts, horror short fictions from Joe Lansdale. SST uh, is doing and has completed, and one more volume remains, in Joe Lansdale's complete short fiction works. It's in four volumes, and this contains all of Joe Lansdale's horror fictions. And if you like The Gunslinger, the Dark Tower series from Stephen King, you know, you like your horror fantasy with a, with the scent of gunpowder in the air, then you got to get The Thicket. The Thicket is a straight-up crime horror western um, that... Uh, takes place in the historical South, so it's not a fantastic other world science fiction novel like the Dark Tower series, but the 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 idea, the the premise of a young boy uh, journeying with elder gunslingers to create some justice has a lot of similarities and tie-ins with um, the Dark Tower, if you think of the Cotet uh, on their quest for justice to save the beam and that I think there are some similarities. There's a quest and there are a lot, there's a lot of gun shooting. This is Joe Lansdale's best book. No doubt in my mind. I love it. You'll get some arguments from other people who are wrong, who think it's paradise sky or the bottoms. Both of those books are in Joe Lansdale's top 10, top five, maybe even top three, but the thicket stands head and shoulders above all where Joe Lansdale differs from Stephen King is that he writes more uh, Western fiction, uh, real Western, like Paradise Sky is a, a Western uh, about Nat Love. Brilliant book. That is a fantastic book, too. <clears throat> and Joe Lansdale is a lot more humor. He's, he's a lot funnier. I, I would never think of Stephen King as funny, but Joe Lansdale, certainly, if you, if you read The Complete Drive-In, he's hilarious. Uh, and I, I love that. Um, it's just a touch of humor. Um, Joe Lansdale tugs on the heartstrings as well. Uh, Joe Lansdale, like I said, is a great American storyteller. So um, you, he's the whole package. But um, he does go a little bit further afield. But if you start with Wet Juju or The Thicket, then I think you can get into some of Joe Lansdale's back catalog, which is extensive. He's been writing since like 1980, um, almost as long as King. Up next on my list is Philip Fracassi where Philip Fracassi shares qualities with King is in the idea of putting ordinary people in extraordinary situations. I think that's one thing that everybody loves about King is that the characters are so relatable. They feel like people you talk to over your, over your backyard fence, people you go grocery shopping with, you know, just the, the, the people in your neighborhood, in your neighborhood. And <clears throat> Philip Fikasi has those qualities as well. He he makes you care about the characters, and then he then he drops them into the frying pan, and then he takes them into the fire, and then he puts them in the deep fryer, and then you eat everything in the breading, and you say yes, Chef Philip. I would like more of this deep fried people you serve. Maybe you don't go that far, but I do. I'm beef daddy, and I do what I want. So if you like The Shining. And Children of the Corn, you will like Boys in the Valley. This book is about a bunch of kids in an orphanage trapped in this uh, blizzard situation. It's, it's rural Pennsylvania Valley. And then something really bad happens, shows up at the orphanage, and the kids don't act right. They ain't acting right. The kids ain't right. This was... I, I, I say the thing about, I, I did a review on this book as well, but, you know, I can't count on you to seeing that. Um, so I'll just tell you very quickly what I loved about this book was it was a slow burn, but a fast page turner. I cared about what happened next, and I was always dying to get back to the story. Um, but it didn't, it wasn't like a typical uh, thrill ride. You know, it was a slow burn. It got there. And you, you have to trust the story. And it had me hooked from the first passage. So um, I loved it. Unfortunately, this book is sold out at the publisher. Um, there's a funny story where Stephen King said he wants to get this book. But it is sold out. So some of, of someone close to Stephen King actually had to send him a copy 
from Earthling Publications. Uh, don't hit up Earthling Publications for this book. You're not going to be able to find it. But I have a feeling it'll come out in a trade edition in short order because this book does deserve to get into to get to slam into more people's eyeballs. You rub your eyes all over those pages side to side. And this book deserves that attention. It is fantastic. So if you loved It by Stephen King, and who hasn't loved that book? It's my top, it's in my top two. I love that book. Was it my top one? I don't remember where I ranked it. Those things change anyway. We just got to give videos titles and then put them out. So it's, it's kind of arbitrary. But if you liked It, you will love Commodore. Obviously, the difference between It and Commodore is sort of apparent right there. Um, it is a bohemoth. This is a slender volume of awesomeness, but um, the idea is similar. <laughs> it's it's boys dealing with uh, something amiss in in the, in their hometown. So it takes place in Derry. Commodore takes place in Sabbath, and um, and it's up to the kids to uh, kind of figure out what's going on, and. It's, it's really intriguing. I think Philip Fricassi, I interviewed him. I talked to him about Sabbath. He said there's more fiction to come in the town of Sabbath. I asked him for a full-length novel. I think that would be awesome because this just whetted my appetite. I, I wanted more from this town. And uh, apparently there are other short works that take place in that town. I just haven't read them yet. Um, where Philip Fricassi differs from Stephen King... Um, is that he takes on, uh, he'll, he'll take the story in, an, in, a, in a direction I don't think Stephen King would have gone. Uh, <laughs> where he took Commodore, for example, I, 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 wouldn't see, I couldn't see Stephen King making those same executive decisions. Not that either made a better decision than the other, it's just um, they trusted their imaginations to take them along two distinctly different dark paths. Um, I have to read more Philip Fricassi so I can have a better idea of what he has to offer. But the quality of the storytelling is clear, compelling, active voice, ordinary people in extraordinary situations, and um, an another author that I, am I love to open that first page because I am guaranteed a return on the investment of my precious time. Maybe you have time to waste, but Beef Daddy don't. And last up in my tour of five authors you need to read if you love Stephen King is Thomas Olda Huvelt. The qualities Thomas Olda Huvelt shares with Stephen King are all of them. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Thomas Olda Huvelt has all the same qualities as Stephen King. The page turning, the storytelling, the chills, the fears, the creeps, the ordinary people in extraordinary situations. I would easily say that he is a rightful heir to the throne of Stephen King. I've also said this about Josh Mallerman, and I stand by that. I think there should be a very big throne. There are a lot of great authors out there. In fact, it should be a bench. Let's just say it's a bench, and we got these five authors on that bench. Um, because to say there's one heir is just ridiculous. There's so much talent out there. But Thomas Olda Huvelt has so many things that are, it's, when I read, for example, let's get into it. When I read Hex, I felt like I was 15 again reading classic Stephen King. If you liked Pet Cemetery, you will love Hex. This book has a lot of the same chills and creeps. I mean, this is, this is a really creepy story. It's got a lot, it's got some humor in it too. It's, the first part of it seems kind of crazy and creepy and 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 then and then the last half the last quarter sort of takes a much darker turn but um a lot of a lot of what you I loved about pet cemetery is contained here but this is brilliantly original this isn't just a carbon copy or fan fiction of Stephen King this is the real deal this is grand master storytelling horror um and this book came on the scene um thomas olda Huvelt writes in his native tongue which is dutch 
even though he is fluent in English, he's probably a better English speaker than I am, as these videos attest. But uh, what he does is he has a, somebody else, a professional, translate his works from Dutch to English, and then he reads those translations and makes edits along the way, maybe stressing something he wanted to say uh, in a different way. Um, <clears throat> but in 2013, he wrote Hex, I think in 2015 or 16, it was translated to English. And Stephen King tweeted about it, and then the book went viral. Boom, exploded all over the place. And that was kind of crippling fame for Thomas, who then took a break from writing for a long time. Well, not for a long time, but for a while. For a while. Um, and uh, he just recently came back on the scene with his second English translated book, which is Echo. Now, Echo is perfect. If you loved The Shining, you will dig this book. Echo has a lot of the same themes as The Shining. There's the force of nature, which shuts Jack up in the overlook, and the force of nature on uh, the mountain. And also possession. In, in a lot of ways, the overlook possesses Jack, influences Jack to do its bidding. And in this way, there's a much more literal uh, possession that takes place. I will say, uh, just like I said with Hex, this is not a retread carbon copy fan fiction, um, but this is brilliantly new. In fact, both Hex and Echo, I feel, are reinventing horror. They are taking some things that we thought were tried and true and blowing them up and making them reimagined in a way, uh, completely original. And it's not easy when somebody can invent a monster. And while there's no creature in here, there is definitely a reinvention going on. One thing about Thomas Oldehuvelt is he's a young author, just like Mallerman and Philip Fricassi, with a lot of books coming ahead. Um, I think he's just getting started. And that is exciting to me. His next English translated book will be coming out in 2023. It'll be called Oracle. And it I read the synopsis. It sounds amazing. I, I think there's going to be a lot to be excited about coming forth with, with this author. Where Thomas Oldehuvelt differs from Stephen King is he relies a lot more on lore and um, some of that generational horror that gets handed down um, from you know the oral tradition to the written word uh, along the way through history, through cultures, and through communities. So both those, both Echo and Hex, rely on 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 some of that lore coming through, and in some ways either getting dismantled or proven founded on old evils. So Joe Lansdale, Robert McCammon, Thomas Old Hoovelt. Philip Fricassi, Josh Mallerman, all these authors are waiting for you. Some are brand new, almost. Some have established back catalogs. But there's a lot of great reading if you like Stephen King. So hopefully this introduces you with some handshake and a stout to some great authors that you could check out yourself from the library, from these small press publishers, from your local indie bookstore, wherever you get your fiction addiction administered to. I'm only here to help push these books, man. I'm your pusher. <laughs> the Jeff Ward pusher. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Take it easy and stay frosty. Um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to that part later, Jeff. So just edit this part out. I'm waving to you, future Jeff. Just do it, you bastard. You hairy, itchy bastard.